What is going on, guys? Welcome to Gump's Podcast, episode number nine. And today I'm going to be winging it. The past 24 hours have been really, really hectic. Um, so I do have a couple uh, topics I want to talk about today. Uh, just very small ones. So this one, this episode is probably going to be rather short today. Um, I did have a big video plan for you guys. Um, it's no one's fault. Um, we had a video plan for you guys. It was supposed to be like around 20 minutes long, maybe even longer. Uh, but my video, my video editor is just coming back and I g gave him that, um, he couldn't get it done. Not a big deal. So I'll probably just reveal it to you guys on Sunday and, uh, we'll go from that. And what's the video about today, four years ago, I created my YouTube channel. I, well, I didn't create it. I started filming my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel has been around since May, 2013, but I didn't really start until December of 2014. So, that's my official birth year. That's when I started making videos, and that's the YouTube birth of me. And, my God, guys. Whew, just give me a minute, because I'm really thirsty. I've been around, like I said, the past 24 hours have been really hectic. So, I'm going to be drinking a lot more water than usual. Mm. But, uh, yeah, guys. Four years of YouTube... I'm not going to be like one of those guys like, I never thought I was going to be doing it this long. No, no. I didn't know how long I was going to do this because I wasn't thinking that far ahead. I was just like, hey, this would be cool. Let's do it. And the more I did it, the more I was having fun with it. And let me just talk about this year alone. Uh, year four was easily my best and my favorite YouTube year ever. And... I'm, I'm not going to say that every year, like, oh, this was the best. Or the, no, I'm, I'm not one of those people that tries to one-up himself every year. This year was just so incredible. And I have you guys to thank for that. I gained the most subs in one year. Uh, the beginning of this year alone, I only had, I had less than – I was like 270 the beginning of the year. So I gained over 100 subs in one year. That doesn't seem like a lot to you guys, but to me, that's the fastest I've grown – really ever and so th there's that and then there's my WTF series starting up and then there was the podcast I, I stopped for a long time but then now I'm rebooting now as you guys see now but and I met so many cool and amazing people like uh, New World Nerds I met I, I didn't really start like talking and hanging with them like I've been until this year. I mean, I, I think I did a video or two with them in 2017, if I'm not mistaken. No, actually, I don't think so, because I think our first collaboration was in 2018. So I knew of their existence, but we never really collabed until 2018. That was my uh, Say What Trivia, which, by the way, guys, if you want to participate in Say What Trivia, I haven't uploaded that in a long time because, yet again, I have no participants. So if you want to participate in Say What Trivia, comment down below, and I'll hook you guys up. Um... So, so there's that, and uh, just p personally, I mean, this has been like every year is gonna be rough. So if you look at the negatives, it's always gonna be bad. But when I look at the positives, it just really does overweigh the negatives. Yeah, I had my back injury. Yeah, I had what like two shitty jobs, and I, I left them both. When yeah, I can look at them like that. But also, I've I've met so many cool and amazing people. I made my short film this year, which is getting a lot of love. And I mean a lot of love. And I can't thank you guys enough for all the support with that. It's got over 200 views right now. It's got 14 likes, zero dislikes, which is amazing, guys. Um, I think today I can make this announcement. We are officially, officially making a sequel. It won't be the next project we work on because right now we're already getting the, the gears moving for a an, another film. And we're going to hopefully get that into a film festival. Um, I'm not going to release any details about it. I, the only thing I'm really going to say, it's titled The Gamble. And it takes place in 1940s. So it's definitely going to be an interesting film to make. But I have a lot of passion for this, so I'm really excited about that. Then after that, then we'll make a Mason sequel. If you guys have not seen it yet, you can look in my in your in the video feed. If But for whatever reason, you... Just don't have time for that. You can just look up on the search bar Mason short film, and then it'll be the first thing that pops up. Um, I remember since year two, the beginning of year two, I've been trying to make a short film. 
since the beginning of year two, if not year two, beginning of year, like the end of year one. And I never could get it off the ground. And is Mason perfect? No. Is any film perfect? No. But I can finally say I did something that I loved and I'm happy about it. I'm happy with all the, the love and support I've gotten with it. I loved filming it. It was probably the best few days I had filming ever. <laughs> like, like that's taken all the YouTube videos. Yes, I had a lot of fun making a lot of YouTube videos, but there's nothing like uh, being behind the camera and on camera filming a story. And I just love it to death. And um, so going back to the whole Mason 2 thing, we do have a GoFundMe page uh, going right now because um, the story that we're going for, um, that I'm developing right now, it, it's going to take a bit of coin and something that I can't afford and I can't expect my buddies to keep carrying me, especially when they have their own personal shit. So um, I want to ask you guys, and I, I, I normally don't like to ask you for money. I, I, I genuinely don't because it feels like a cop-out. But if I want to make this good, I'm going to ask for you guys to help me out here. Um, so you can look it up at uh, GoFundMe. Or let me look at the web, uh, the, uh, the link really quick so I'm not giving you guys the wrong link. Uh, if I can look it up, that will be nice. It locked me out. Okay, that's tough. Well, anyways, I will post it on my Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you guys follow me there. It's Gumps underscore videos. I have the link already posted on my Twitter. I will post it on my Instagram after this. So make sure you're following that. But the goal is it's pretty pricey uh, for for me at least five hundred dollars. But that's going to props. It's going to like makeup and it's going to a lot of different things. If we are going to make this look good, we need the money, and none of it's going to go into any of our pockets. I will promise you guys that. If for whatever reason if we don't spend the five hundred dollars, but I did the calculations. Me and my friend did the calculations. It's going to be pretty close. It's a pretty tight budget. We were probably going to need 550 to 600 bucks. So let's keep it 500, a nice solid number. And but for whatever reason, we get, we we go under budget. Uh, the remainder of that money will go to a charity, and I, I I'll let you guys know what charity that is because this is so far down the road. But we, if we want to start making this thing happen, we got to get uh, this 500 dollars. And I'm like I said, none of it's going to go into any of our pockets. Don't think we're going to be sleazy bitches or anything like that. So, I just want to thank you guys for all the love and support on Mason. Thank you. I would like to ask for your support on Mason 2, uh, which is titled Mason's Happily Ever After. It's going to be a longer story. We're, like The first one was around 12 minutes. This one's going to be north of 20 minutes, uh, which is pretty long for a short film. If you guys don't know, a, a normal short film ranges from 10 to 15 minutes. We're going to go above that and go closer to 20 to 25 minutes. Like I said, what I want to do is go bigger. Um, and I do have a pretty good story going. I think it's going to be a lot funnier because there's not a lot of, uh, character development I have to do, uh, because Mason's already established and I think it's just gonna be a lot of fun. So if you guys do end up supporting with any amounts, any amounts, it could be $1, it could be one penny. I don't give a shit. Money's money. You will get a credit in the film. Uh, all details is going to be in that link. So just go check that out guys. Uh, just get another drink of water really quick. Um, another thing I'm really, really, really happy about this year is definitely uh, the WTF series. I've been trying to get different series on the channel going. I had Gumps up updates a long time ago for you OG Gumps videos fans. I had Gumps updates where I would have a, a news story about whatever. That lasted a little bit. That was probably the longest series I had. Didn't work out. Um, I, I just c I canned that. Uh, there was a lot of big hits on that, but uh, never really massively world lo worldly loved. Um, but definitely, there's um, the WTF series is easily the best series I've had so far, and I don't plan on stopping because there's a lot of bad movies that need reviewing. I mean, last week I reviewed Teeth. Uh, the week before that, I forget what I reviewed. The week before that, I think it was. Uh, it was uh, The Wicker Man, which was garbage. My favorite, easily my favorite WTF series review. I talk about it all the time. And it's the Cat in the Hat review. I 
like I broken down twice on camera just in pure laughter. One time I had a cold, so I I sounded like I was a heavy smoker. It was like I think that was like year two, year two. It was definitely not year three because year three I had my computer and this was when I was filming it on my phone. Year two, I was, I sounded like I was a heavy smoker and so I was recording with my brother. This was when I was going through a phase where I was trying to find a, a co-host on my channel, and I just broke down laughing and we just we we could not get anything done. And then it happened again with Cat in a Hat. I was just just busting out laughing so much and I just love that so much and you guys clearly seem to love that video too because you guys shared the shit out of it and it's got like almost 200 views and I think the most popular surprise I didn't think this was going to be the most popular but Shark Boy and Lava Girl that that review is doing the most the, doing the well, most well right now which I was surprised because I didn't think it was going to be that big of a hit for the longest time, this was stuck at 34 views. I was like, okay, whatever. We'll, we'll find the next one. Um, I'm not. I'm okay with 34 views. I mean, that's like my average viewer base. But I thought I was gonna get 50, 60. Um, but I didn't didn't check up on it for a long time. And then I remember like a few weeks ago, I was like like 200 something. I was like, Jesus Christ! So you guys clearly love the WTF series. Some not as much as others, but. It's clearly a successful series that you guys love, so I'm going to continue doing them. And I think it's going to be a permanent uh, thing on this channel. So, there's that, and there's so many other things. Like, I could talk about the year. It's just, it's incredible. Like, let me go back to New, New World Nerds. I talk about them all the time. And the reason is because I love making friends on YouTube. I, I explained this on my 300 sub special. Uh, I continue to do this, not to, to really seek fame and fortune off of YouTube, because I don't plan on, like, I, I would like to make a dime or two off of, off of YouTube, it would be nice, but the, the state of YouTube is right now, it's probably not going to happen, so, I mean, would I like more subs? Of course, and who wouldn't like more subs? If anyone says, like, oh, I don't want more subs, there are fucking liars, so... But that's not my main goal anymore. My main goal is to find people to hang out with, to this talk nerdy shit just talk film just talk in general get to know each other and i met a lot of people on youtube throughout the years the amazing we have at invention kenny reviews who's my now my editor um so many other people but the thing that the difference with new world nerds is the fact that there's a group of people with, they just got so much raw talent that like they don't know it yet, but like they they got this personality, this charisma to them that is just so awe inspiring, and I just love it. And hanging out with them is just so much fun, and it's something that I wish I had over here. I'm not trying to throw a fucking pity party because it's not a pity party. It's something that makes them them. They have a group of people. They have Yasmin. They have Nico. They have uh, Justin. They have Ian. They have Mike. They have so many people over there with so much love. If you guys are not subscribed to them, the fuck are you doing on this channel? Honestly, I talk about them all the time. I stream with them all the time. Honestly, go subscribe to their channel. They're a lot of fun to watch. I mean, they don't. He doesn't post as much because he's really busy with his life. Nico, he's the guy who runs the, the channel. But definitely go check out his stuff because. He's a really funny guy, and I stream with him almost every week. Almost every week, there's times where I can't, um, but I did stream with him uh, this Wednesday, so definitely go check that out. It was a lot of fun, but yeah, th this is what I'm seeking, and that's what makes them special is the fact that they're just cool to talk with. They're cool to just discuss things with. They're cool to collaborate with. At this point, I don't even call them collaborations. Because I feel like we just have a mutual uh, relationship where, like, we're like you scratch my back, I scratch yours. Like, that saying, it's kind of that. Just, like, we just help each other out. I think this is, like, a start of something special, honestly. Because every – a lot of big YouTubers have groups. Not, not a lot of them, but there's uh, definitely a group of YouTubers I'm subscribed to. They're a gaming channel. And there's Vanos Gaming. There's uh, Big Jiggly Panda. There's Smitty. There's um, Mini Lad. There's there's uh, the Terrorizer. There's Nogla. If you guys haven't heard of them, it's fine. I didn't really hear about them until like four or five months ago, and that's when I started binge watching them. But I feel like me and Nico 
are starting to do something like that where we just constantly collaborate where it's not even collaborations anymore. It's just us hanging out and our channels are not merging or anything like that, but that's what it's like. It's like those guys constantly collaborate all the time and they're just hanging out because like they do gaming stuff and we just do movie stuff and we just stream games and stuff like that. That And that's what we have. That's our relationship right now. So, um, I would love to have more uh, YouTube channels in the mix. So, honestly, if you're still watching this and you're a YouTube channel that just wants to hang out, loves video games, loves movies, loves nerdy stuff, just whatever, contact me on Twitter, Gumps underscore videos, and contact uh, Nico at New World Nerds on Twitter. Um, enough about that, because uh, I, I think I shouted out their channel enough. Holy shit. Um, I think... Like I said, this year, just an incredible year, and I had my biggest stream. I had 199 uh, people come in and out. I mean, it wasn't always all at once, but I had 199 people coming in and out. It was the strangest stream. If you guys were there, God bless your soul, honestly, because there was a lot of just weird shit going on. Just a lot of weird shit. It was I couldn't even talk. Because I was streaming by myself. It was Rainbow Six Siege. And it was just a bunch of yelling at each other. Like I, This is when my text-to-speech worked. For some reason, it doesn't work now. It was just a, just the text-to-speech voice constantly talking. I'm, I'm trying to help hold a conversation. And the text-to-speech is like, fuck my mother. No, I'm not even kidding. There was shit like that. Like It was weird. But it was hilarious. I, I, like That was definitely one of my most memorable videos of the year. So th there was that, that stream, there was the cat in the hat video, there's a lot of streams I just loved, I, I helped New World Nerds get their first uh, victory on their on their channel, um, on, on Fortnite by the way, it was on Fortnite, and uh, I'm trying to remember what else is a very memorable video, I guess the, the, the start of, um, the start of of my uh, WTF series, which was Emoji Movie. That was pretty memorable because it was, a, I didn't think it was gonna be something huge. Uh, I was like, I'll probably do one, two or three. It's not gonna be that big of a deal. But then it got a lot of love. I was like, oh shit, let me do this. It'll be pretty fun. And here we are several weeks later and I'm still, oh, several months later, because I think I did that in like April and I'm still doing them. I think I did a total of 15, 16 videos for the WTF series. So it's a pretty lengthy series so far. So, oh, by the way, guys, I'm going to make the announcement now. If you, Like I said, if you guys are still watching, this is going to be a really long video. It's just me talking about the year. Uh, there's going to be, I'm going to talk about some nerdy stuff in just a moment, but I want to just wrap this up. So I was struggling to figure out what my 25th special was going to be for uh, my WTF series reviews. I think I got it because I saw the first two minutes of the video, the video, the movie, but we were already like three bad movies in and we just couldn't take it anymore. Like we couldn't take it. It was bad. It is a movie called Troll 2. Comment down below. If you are still watching this, comment down below. Let me know. What do you think about Troll 2? If you don't know what it is, look it up. It's very infamous. It's up there with The Room apparently. Fantastic. So that's why I'm thinking about my 25th special on that. Um, now, there's not really much else to talk about. I talk about everything. Um, the podcast, the streams. I just, like, now my new schedule. I'm gonna, this is going to be my permanent schedule for now, it looks like. Like, for the next several months, uh, if not for the year until something drastic changes or something like that. But right now, this is going to be my consistent schedule. So if you guys don't know the schedule for some reason, on Mondays I stream. Tuesdays are my stream highlights. Wednesday I'm off. Uh, Thursday I have the, uh, the Gums podcast. And on Friday I have the WTF series. And whenever a movie comes out of the week that I want to watch and I see opening weekend, I will have a, um, the review up on Saturday on a rare occasion Sunday, so that's the only one that I don't really have a sweet spot. And on the occasional whatever, something big happens, something something breaking news, whatever, I will put up another video whenever that happens. So, now let's talk about some of the nerdy stuff I wanted to get through. Uh, this is the big one I wanted to talk about. The big one. I'm going to need a lot of water for this one because I'm pretty pissed off about it. Okay. 
Yeet. Okay. Um, Daredevil is um uh, <clears throat> been canceled. So, what happened? Why is Daredevil canceled? I mean, Iron Fist and Luke Cage were canceled. I thought it was leading to something like a, a uh, uh, Heroes for Hire because they they said in their statements they will return. Whatever that means. Okay. Several months later, or several weeks later, when Daredevil airs and like a couple days pass, Daredevil has been canceled. What's going on? And some people will be asking, why is Jessica Jones not canceled? Why is Punisher not canceled? Why are they, why are they still around? Pun people will say, well, Punisher's good. Jessica Jones is good. I hate Jessica Jones, by the way. I think that show is complete trash. Um, it's because uh, Punisher and Jessica Jones already are either done production or they're wrapping up production. So that's why. I guarantee you when those shows are done airing, like when the majority of their views are done, they will cancel it. I'll guarantee you that. Now, why is this happening? Well, I saw a theory, and I think it's beyond a theory as good as it is. Um, as we all know, Disney's getting their own streaming service. What does this mean? Are they going to get in their? Are they going to be on the streaming service? No, not happening. Why? Because it's Disney, and they're not going to put a TVMA, a rated R comic book franchise. Some people are like, it's not really rated R. It's it's pretty close to it. They don't throw any f bombs or anything like that. They don't swear or anything like that. But with the brutal nature and the murder, like in season one of Daredevil, Kingpin literally smashed a door on, on a guy's head until his fucking head fell off. I think, I I. Th think that get, that warrants a rated R rating. I'm just saying, quote me, brother. But they are a, either a hard PG-13 or a rated R franchise. Will not fit a Disney streaming service. Will they make an exception? I don't think so. It just doesn't work. And why would you water them down? And plus, in the statement for Daredevil, if you guys haven't read the statement, I don't have the statement with me. Like I said, I'm winging it. Um, they stated uh, that, that, that this, for Daredevil, that this is the last and final season. Now, what does that mean? Because earlier they said that they um, these characters will return in future installments. I have two theories, and yet again, one of them is not my own. One of them is another YouTuber, John Campy, a big, big YouTube channel, a huge inspiration for me. He said that he thinks that Daredevil will get his own movie in Phase 4. Now, I agree that that will probably happen. It's not going to be... Uh, uh, what the fuck's his name? Uh, something Cox. I forget the fuck his last name. Whatever his name is. The guy who plays Daredevil. It's not going to be him. It's not going to be this Luke Cage. It's not going to be any of these actors. They're going to be... Because, yet again, they try to separate themselves from the... Uh, the uh, Netflix and MCU universe, even though they had some direct ties, they're not really connected, nor will they ever be, because, yet again, Netflix owns the rights to those incarnations of those characters. And Netflix is not exactly happy with that. Oh, that's right. I had a thing going with Disney streaming service. My bad. Basically, Netflix is pissy because they got competitors now, and they're like, well, you, well, you want to have a streaming service, eh? Well, fuck you too. We're gonna just stop showing all your franchises. About a boom. So basically, that's what happens. Now, going back into it, what I was saying earlier, um, Netflix owns those rights to those characters. Like, not the characters alone. Um, this is basically their incarnations, and they own those rights. So you can't get uh, those characters and show them in a movie. So that's why we haven't really collaborated. They have. They haven't crossed over before and yet again the guy from the, the part of Disney uh, Bob Iger hates Kevin Feige Kevin Feige hates him they were barking at each other about Civil War saying that the budget was too big and then the guy the head of Disney's like well guess what Kevin Feige's rolling some coin so we're on Kevin's team and then that's when shit hit the fan so I think they're gonna get uh, new incarnations that's what he said too he thinks that Daredevil's gonna get his own movie my theory is um, that we're going to get a Defenders movie. Like, just with the same characters, um, 
they're not going to get each individual movie. I think it's going to be like a Guardians of the Galaxy scenario where it's just a team. Not in, not, not in space. It's like it's going to be an isolated team maybe taking place like it's just somewhere like just like just somewhere away from the Avengers so they can do their own thing. Um, but the one thing is I don't know how you're going to make Jessica Jones relevant. That's my problem. And the thing is with her um, – because with all these other Avengers, uh, Jessica Jones doesn't really work. Not because how dark she is, because she's a really dark character. She's got superhuman strength. Barely. She's not even on level with uh, Captain America. She's below him. And she's got a lot of rage issues. So she doesn't offer much. So that's why I don't that's why I'm a little conflicted with her. Uh, Luke Cage, I think if they make him as powerful as he is in the comics, that can go well. If you make Iron Fist as powerful as he is in the comics, that can go well. Daredevil, what you can do for him is just use his fucking senses. Like, like when Iron Man can't detect anything, when Captain America can't see anything, it's in the middle of the dark or something like that, and Iron Man's like, I can't see shit, let me put my night vision down a little bit. But then... Like, he still can't see anything, whatever. Like, they're in a warehouse. Daredevil would be like, Brothers, we're being surrounded. There's like 50 guys coming on us with RPGs. How do you know that? I sense them. Like, I feel like there's something with him that you can do. But with Jessica Jones, it's going to be kind of tough. But I, I'm i not 100% sold on it. I'm going to put a 20% chance it happens. That's pretty high. Even for me, but I want to put a 20% chance it happens. Because they did say that we will see them in future installments. I think because since uh, Kevin Feige saw how popular they were, maybe they'll get their own movie. Maybe. Because I can see them working together in an in, in Avengers movie. Because, I mean, look at the Guardians. You got a talking raccoon with no superpowers. You got a talking tree, well, barely a talking tree. I am Groot. You got a tree that regenerates, but very, very slowly. And you got Peter Quill, who basically lost all his powers in Guardians 2. And Gamora, dead, bitch. And then you got Nebula. She, she's her. And you got Mantis, who touches people and feels her emotions and tells them what to do, basically. So I feel like on that level that the Defenders is not a far stretch. If you can put a the Guardians of the Galaxy in Avengers, I think with those three specifically, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and Daredevil, if you put them in, if you just boost them up a little bit and make them a little bit more powerful, um, I think it will work, except for Daredevil. Daredevil is fine as he is because his senses can be very, very, very useful. Um Luke Cage, like, I know Luke Cage in the comics one time is so powerful that he can basically walk off a nuclear blast. He's supposed to be super durable, and but they, for obvious reasons, nerfed him in the Netflix shows because it's a, it's a ground-level show. But with a bigger budget, you can do sil- silly, s- stupid shit like that where you'd, like, fucking shoot him with an RPG. Like, an RPG being shot him in the show, I think, knocked his ass out. Regal Luke Cage would be like, Bitch and like that, that's fucking cool. Uh, Iron Fist. I don't know too much about Iron Fist. I only remember him from the Ultimate Spider-Man show. But I know, um, yes, he can make uh, Luke Cage bleed. So that's gotta tell you how powerful he can be. So boost them both up, and but like, yet make their double senses very, very, very useful. I mean, like, let's be honest. I know you Guardians fans out there love Peter Quill. I love me my Peter Quill too, but. Daredevil is a little bit more useful than uh, Peter Quill. I mean, because first off, Daredevil's smarter. He's better in combat. Yes, yes, Peter Quill's got his toys, but... I mean, it's not the toys that makes the man. It's the man that makes the toys, I guess. I I think that makes sense. But whatever. You get what I'm trying to say. Peter Quill's kind of childish. Has poor leadership skills. But that's the charm of him. That's what's the charm of him. They're like a band of misfits. But if that can work, you should be able to make Daredevil work. Okay, I'm done on that. Because I, I, I think that would be a good idea. But yet again, it's going to be difficult to make 
uh, Jessica Jones were because I never heard of her. I know absolutely nothing about her except from the show. So if you make her as damaged as that, she's really just holding the team back and not really providing much because, I mean, Daredevil is a good detective when it comes to sensing shit like that. I mean, she can help read to him. I mean, that's what Luke Cage and Iron Fist are there for. So maybe they replace her or, like, put Punisher in there. But Punisher, you can make PG-13, but, like, that's going to be kind of iffy. Not because of the MCU will be like, no, that's that can't work. No, I just, like, I'm not sure how that would work out, especially in a Defenders movie. Uh, honestly, I just want to hear your thoughts down below, guys. I'm really interested. I want to get the discussion going do you think that a defenders movie is possible do you think it's more likely just gonna be a daredevil movie would you like to see a heroes for hire movie because i would love to see that just to see luke cage and iron fist bantering back and forth because honestly dude that would be freaking amazing i would love to see that but uh mate like here 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 i would like to see this here's your movie luke cage and iron fist already know each other they got the heroes for hire uh, and then you got Daredevil and maybe Jessica Jones. Uh, Daredevil um, comes across her beating up some dude in an alley. And they're like, yo, bro, stop. And she's like, I'm investigating something, uh, fucker. And then she's investigating something that's supposed to be really big, like an attack on uh, like Harlem or an attack on New York City. Whatever, bro. Um, and um, that kind of – that like whatever she's investigating is like an attack on like New York, like I said – but that ends up directly impacting the Heroes for Hire shop, and the Heroes for Hire shop is blown up. And then Luke Cage and Iron Fist are like really pissed. We're like, motherfucker, we just spent all our money into this bitch, and now we're gonna like, what are we gonna do? And then they see Daredevil and Jessica Jones be like, yo, who blew up our shop? And they're like, we're investigating this, blah blah blah. Team up, because let's be honest, the Defender show I enjoyed, I guess, but. Let's be real here. They were never a team. And they kept saying that. They were not a team. But it's a comic book show for God's sakes. Have a little fun. Daredevil 1 and 2 had fun. Surprisingly, Luke Cage has fun in it. Je Jessica Jones, not really. And that's why I really don't enjoy those shows. And there's plenty of other reasons. You you can see my Jessica Jones Season 2 review. Fucking hated that show. But th like they just kept doubting each other. They kept yelling at each other. And at a certain point, you gotta realize these are your main characters. Just seeing them bark at each other, it gets boring after a while. And it took too long for them to meet. It took them, to, what, episode three or four? And that's already half the fucking show! So, like, I feel like if you make a Defenders movie, you just tighten that up a bit, it can work. It can really work. Just make it more fun. You didn't have dark elements in it, yes. But make it fun, for God's sakes. It's, it's supposed to be a superhero show. If you don't have any fun in it, what's the point? You're telling me that I'm supposed to take Jessica Jones seriously? Yes, her character is very serious, but you're just telling me I'm supposed to take that universe super serious, so I'm supposed to take Luke Cage super serious, so I'm supposed to take Iron Fist, a guy who fought a fucking dragon super seriously? Really? Have some fun! God! Well, yeah, that's basically my, my rant about that. So I'm going to end the show here, guys. I want to hear your thoughts down below, guys. Do you think there's going to be... A Defenders movie? Do you think it's just going to be a Heroes for Hire? Do you think it's just going to be uh, Daredevil? Comment down below. Thank you guys for four amazing years on YouTube, guys. I have a Twitter, Instagram, Gumps underscore videos. Go follow me there for the latest news and updates on my channel, guys. Thank you. Uh, wow, shit. I've done this outro for fucking years. I didn't think I would get into that. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, or cop. Later and goodbye.